Hi everybody, I'm David, and uh, this is one of three parts of a chess lesson that I took recently. Now I'm an international master of chess, and in the past I've usually posted videos um, here and elsewhere of myself as a chess teacher, as opposed to as a chess student. But I had a long break, and uh, recently, for various reasons, wanted to become a chess player again. And so in order to become a chess player again, I've had to study and practice and take some lessons. Uh, well, I didn't have to, but it's a very effective way to uh, get good again. So I've been doing that. And uh, in each of these parts, there's one position that I've picked out from a game of mine, a position that was of interest to me and which I studied on my own before the lesson. Um, but then I bring the position to uh, my teacher uh, a very, very strong player, U.S. champion two years ago, uh, Sam Shankland. And I ask him about what I've learned and what questions I still have, and he uh, sort of gives a whole other level of understanding of those positions um, and really helps me to know what the plans are for those positions, which in turn helps me to then understand the evaluations and, and how to play the positions. Um, I learned a lot in each of these, and uh, if you're a reasonably advanced chess player, you may learn some things as well. If you're a total beginner, it may just be interesting you, to you to see how strong players train and how there are even higher levels and uh, you know what the gap might be between an IM and a GM, or how does a super GM think when you see um, Sam's depth of knowledge uh, in strategic chess. In any case, I hope you like it. If you do, there are two other segments from the same uh, lesson that I had, and you can go check those out in the Chess Dojo channel here. All right, take care, enjoy. So first position, Sam, um, is from the Richter Rouser. I'll just show everyone else how we get there real quick, although you will would recognize it if I just went to move 14, of course. Um, so we even talked about this before the match, right? Yeah, but um, I think something got lost in translation because here you were playing knight d2 to d4, yeah? Yeah. So I think that is often the right plan, and here it's the wrong plan. What? I, th I think you want to play g4, h4. Is... Basically, I think g4, h4 is your best plan. It's, it's sort of hard to explain, but I'll do my best. Okay. So um, I think that the plan of knight e2 to d4 is vulnerable to the plan of knight d7 and trying to play for d5. Yeah, That's the first thing I would say. So no, the number one thing I would mention is I believe that your best plan is g4, h4. Okay. Right? Now, oftentimes, black will try to prevent you from accomplishing that. So for example, let's say, um, I think h6 is a mistake, but let's say the game were to continue something like bishop e7, uh, h4, b5, bishop e3. And here, I think that if you're allowed to play g4 next, you're going to be clearly better. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe black will play h5. Right. Whereas if he played h6, it would look more like the game. Yeah. And then I would think g4 would fit with your plans extremely well. Right. Uh, but basically here, I think now the plan of knight takes e6 and knight e2 makes a lot more sense, specifically due to the weakness of the g5 square. Mm -hmm. And what we can see is that after something like this here, if we had this exact same position with black's pawn back on h6, I believe he would be absolutely fine. Uh, because I think you would have a lot of trouble stopping d5, and I don't see how you would really be proceeding in the coming moves. Right. The problem for black is here you're going to go bishop g5. And this is going to really make it much harder for him to get d5 through. Uh, it's going to be much harder for him to keep the center under control. Mm -hmm. um, and it basically, he needs to play knight d7 to get d5. Like if he goes, I don't know, queen c7 or something, like this never works. There's always e5 because of bishop f4. Yeah. I've, so I've seen that a few times, but I still manage to forget it pretty often. So essentially, like in a position like this one, his only way to ever get uh, to get d5 through is to get knight d7 first. And if you're able to stick your bishop on g5 and leave it there, it becomes very, very hard for him to play knight d7. Um, if you contrast that to the way this game went, after f3, h6, bishop e3, b5, when we get a position like this one, he had no trouble whatsoever playing knight d7. Mm -hmm. Right, and is your knight really so much better on d4 than it was on c3? I don't really think so. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that here g4 would have been very sensible. I see. Uh, and that knight e2 to d4. I think this plan really only makes sense if black has already played h5. Dang! I could have sworn that in our pre-match lesson we looked at knight e2 to d4 here. 
Oh, I thought, I think it's not in this position. If I think what probably happened was I just did a really bad job of um, explaining it. I should have uh, made it very clear in which positions you want to play the 92 to D4 plans and which position you don't. Mm -hmm. And that's probably my failure, not yours. Um, because there are definitely moments where I believe it's best. For example, in this position we just discussed here, I think at this point you do want to play 92 to D4. I don't think you have another great plan. I think this is the way you have to go. Um, and I think it makes a lot more sense when Black is not able to play knight d7, bishop g5. And at this point, it is what you want to do. But mm -hmm. it's for two reasons. One, because it's a bit stronger than it would be. And two, because your best plan with g4 is not available to you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think that here after bishop e3, for example, I think if you... You don't need to take on c6, but it's fine. I think if you throw g4 and h4, this is going to get very bad for Black very fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Neil, he plays the Rouser. That's his his best defense to e4. Um, okay, so I should just play g4, then h4, and then what would be my next move well, possibly then? You might want to... Wanna, guess. It, it might make some sense to play rook g1 before h4. Okay. Um, like, for example, I don't think it will work here, but you're going to have to be on the lookout for stuff like this. Um, which here I don't believe works because I think you can include knight d4 in between. Uh huh. But like, let's say black were to start with queen c7. Yeah. Here I think if you were to be too anxious and play h4, something like this could be tremendously annoying because you're not going to be able to play f4. Um, so this is probably an issue. Mm -hmm. But like after queen c7, I think you might want to start with rook g1, for example. But yes, the plan would be h4. G5 okay. Nice. Well, no, that's a very important detail to know because I didn't really know um, if I'm supposed to, you know, play bishop g2 or e2 or h3 at some point to push through g5 well, or if I should put the rook on g1. On I think the bishop's quite happy on f1 here. It is. I just do it to defend the rook in order to play g5 yeah. maybe, but this seems there, like... Yeah, I think it's better to play rook g1 here. Um, it depends position by position, but in this specific one, I would think that it makes more sense with... Um, with rook g1 just because I mean, okay. yeah this bishop doesn't have a great place to go i think um, oh, well props to jb in a later game like this game he let me get a good position with knight d4 but in a yeah. later game he just kind of played for a quick d5 um like you were saying would be better to do yeah the, this oh. is sort of akin to some of these like bishop e3 e6 knight orfs. um it's like with one pair of knights missing Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it looks a lot like those positions. It's just like, okay, there's no knight on c3 and no knight on f6. Was there anything stopping him from just playing d5 in this position in this game, for example? Um, probably not, but I think that it might make sense to be a little bit patient on it just because I think you're not going to be able to stop d5. Mm -hmm. And essentially, I think as soon as black gets d5 through, any kingside attack will probably not work very well. Okay. And your best plan will be to try to break through in the center. Um, so I think it might make sense for Black to make some waiting moves, like bishop e7, queen c7, or whatever. You okay. could even start thinking about castling. And if you start throwing h4 and stuff, then Black will play d5, and h4 didn't help you very much. And then much I've wasted an extra move. Inside. Right. I think just remaining flexible. It'd be different if I believed that he could, you could stop d5, but because I don't think you can, I think it's good for him to wait. Okay, so we got like here, here, here. Yeah, but 95 I think is very wrong. That's um, totally in the wrong direction, right? Yeah, this is completely wrong because now this makes it much harder for him to play d5 uh, right. because he'll be walking into f4. Yeah, depending on whether g4 so, is hanging. So yeah, I think this was a, I think that 95 is a very poor decision. Yeah, so we get here, right? And now he's used sort of the tempo moves that he had for waiting. Yeah. And I'm finally ready to play g5, and I imagine you would tell me that Oh, no, rook g1, bishop takes h4. So I, I don't have that way of going about g5 here. Well, but maybe you can, and you can play bishop takes b5 check, though, I don't know. I mean, it's very messy. You'd have to figure out what's going on. Rook g1 here? Bishop yeah, h4? Yeah, and then bishop takes b5. It's a huge mess, and who knows what happens. Okay. I mean, I would think... I mean, you would. this is something in a classical game you're going to spend a long time calculating. Yeah. But... Um, it's plausible, I guess, yeah. Certainly. I mean, it's so... I wouldn't necessarily rule it out, but bishop e2 feels very natural. Okay. So in the game I played here, he mm -hmm. played knight c4. Yeah, and this should be horrible for black. Okay. 
It is, but I couldn't figure it out at all. Um, okay, so... And in fact, I only know it's horrible for black because I asked a computer, and the computer told me, and I still couldn't figure out why. So, yeah. um, so I trade, right? This whole 95, obviously, it seems like it's going in the wrong direction. I played G5. Mm -hmm. um, the big threat, I think, is for white to play G6 at some point. GH6 is also just a clean extra pawn and the G5 square for the bishop. Yeah. Anyway, I expected him to trade, trade, and play G6 to stop that. And he okay. did. So we get to this position. Now, here I spent a ton of time in the game and couldn't figure out what to do. I thought let's it was. Start with, let's start with B3 and get this queen off of the F1 square. Oh, you finally made a mistake, Sam. So you're human. Yeah. B3 is yeah. a mistake. Well, I think so because it's what I played. Um, that doesn't mean it's a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I also put it in the computer. <laughs> um, um, okay. So I wanted to play stuff like rook h7, rook h8, use the h file, make f7 a problem for him to keep him from sort of coordinating. I don't think you want to touch the rook just yet. I think you're ready to meet. You want to be ready to meet king d7 with these moves. You also don't really want him to castle long. Um, right. So that was kind of my thought with going rook h7 or rook h8. But I was worried about queen f1, and I didn't see any way to improve anything else in my position. You can always um, try knight b3. Um, that's right. That's the only other move I can play, basically, and it's the right move, apparently. Yeah, it makes some sense. I mean, if we can get knight a5 in. Also, I mean, what what I would really like to do is find a way to either compromise black structure further, like by threatening bishop f4 to entice e5 at a moment when he can't like win a piece with it, or somehow get the bishop to f6. I mean, his bishop on e7 is like the glue holding the position together. If you can play something like knight b3 and then bishop d4 and then like force him to choose between like playing e5 and weakening more squares or whatnot, it, it can get very ugly for him very fast. And here, okay, you're already starting to answer the big question I have for you. The reason I pushed on in this, even though you told me that knight e2 d4 was wrong, is because yeah. this position here, the computer told me, was plus two. Yeah, it's not surprising. And like, and I can tell you, like, I, I didn't even know if I was better. And well, I played this position against myself for a while and didn't know what White's plan was. Well, it all comes down to Black's Rook. It has no good way to join the game. Knight a5 is coming. He cannot play King d7 because of... So first of all, already here, like, he's got to be very careful not to lose immediately. Like, Knight c5 might be like immediately the end of the world like he will have to take it and then you play b3 queen b4 rook h8 check and queen d6 and that's that so like knight c5 is a threat knight a5 is Jesus. a threat Jesus, knight c5 is a threat you know what the computer did when i played an in uncareful move with rook c8 the computer actually played bishop b6 taking away queen c7 that's pretty nice um and so actually it's important that black just play the queen c7 move immediately is his this best is pretty, defense. This is a very normal move against knight b3. I see it a lot in the time and off the way I play it as well. Yeah. Um. So go queen here first, you know, because you're going to have to get hit by knight a5 anyway. So you go queen yeah. here first. Now you're out of the way of knight c5 and knight a5, and of course this weird bishop b6. Um. Here, I... And honestly, even when I played rook c8 for the computer and played bishop b6, like I still couldn't figure out how to win this position for white. Okay, but well, um, but what I mean, can you what can you tell me about how to play this position for white? Is it bishop d4 to f6 basically? That's a good start. I think I would start with rook h7 here. I don't want black to cut so long. Okay. Um, so I think that's a good place to start. Uh, and then. We'll play slowly, but I would think probably my next move is a3. We're mm -hmm. keeping it calm. Eventually, you can invade with queen h2, but let's start with a3. And black's just... This position is very, very hard to handle for black, and his king is very dubious. So basically, for black, I kind of shuffled the bishop when I was playing this position against myself. Sure. I so, kind of like, like shuffled it between f8 and e7. My next plan would be to like to play bishop d4, threatening bishop f6. Mm -hmm. Then if you play e5, put the bishop on c3 and look for bishop b4 next. And like I have all of the queen side advances under control and the d6 pawn. It becomes hard to defend if you play bishop f8, rook h8. Um, things like that start to go wrong for black, I think. Wow. And then there are things where if he plays king d7, you know, knight c5 or something happens. Yeah, this is, really this is, yeah, I mean, the big thing is I don't want to let black's king run away. You don't need to kill him right now, 
Okay. Uh, it's going to be hard to do, among other things, but you need to make sure he can't like teleport to A8 somehow. So a good start is making sure that he can't cast along. That's why I liked Rook H7. Um, and here it's... I think this plan of Bishop D4 to C3 looks very powerful. I mean, maybe A3 was just wasted time, and I should have played it right away, but... Um, well, in a, in a lot of lines where I was like playing this against myself and like at some point I had the computer running and then I turned it off and turned it off because it couldn't like it wasn't even helping me. Right. Um, but I, I mean, I often saw white just play a three. But the thing is, like well, white's threat is so far in the future that the computer lines didn't even tell me why white had the advantage. Well, another point of a three is also if I want to play bishop d4, I don't want to get bishop g5. But, yeah. Uh, which may not work here because of rook h8 to c8 actually, but... Uh, it's always in the air and something to be worried about. Yeah, here there is Rook H8 and White Wings. Yeah, I'm just showing people the why yeah. this is even a Bishop G5 is even a thing. And then, you know, in rook some H8 situation is... like this, you've got Rook takes, and since your Queen's defended, you come out ahead for White. Yeah. Um. Okay, so A3, however, is very, like, good against all this stuff. You know, you don't have to worry about Queen C4 to F1. You don't have to worry about Queen C2 the same way. Yeah, I mean, it's just a super useful move. But let me ask you, like, let's say I play A3, Bishop A8. I sometimes did this for black just to be out of the way of You're stuff. You're breaking up. What's that? Did I lose internet? No, I hear you just fine. No, I still have internet. Yeah. Any better? Uh, you cut out for a second, but I think I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so. Um, all right, so I'm just marking time for black, and uh, let's say I had a chance to play bishop f6. Okay, well, hang on. Here we're in potentially strike moment because rook h8 and knight c5 is also a move. Um, I don't think it works. Knight c5, he can take it. Bishop e5, bishop d6. And I think he has it under control. If rook h7, there's rook f8 or mm -hmm. king c6. So we can't do that just yet. Let's go back a second. Um, yeah, I mean, I would think bishop f6 is the natural follow-up for white. Okay, so bishop f6 is something we would actively like to do in many cases. Yes. Okay. And... I think I did once reach, like, a pure rook endgame, Sam. Yeah. Uh, when I was playing this against myself, I think, where I traded everything except the rooks, and the white rook was on h7, and black was defending f7 with, like, a rook on f8. And you had a pawn on f6? And white has a pawn on f6. Yeah, that's one up. And the end game's a win, right? Because you just walk your king to g7. Well, it depends if black can get e5, king e6, but if you can't, if, like, you he, stop from doing that somehow. He couldn't then... because the white pawn on f3 was on f4. So if he played d5, there was e5, and if he played, played e5, there was, like, f5. Yeah, no, that just seems quite convincing. Yeah, just, so this... It looks literally lost. Yeah. So this is a thing to really go for, is to, like, offer this bishop trade. Yeah, I mean, black could have avoided it with e5, but then, again, this, like, let's say he starts to wake up and stop being a bozo, and we do this, but now, like, bishop b4 is in the air, and at some point f4 could come. It looks so dangerous for black, I mean... It's, it's not necessarily like the easiest thing to crash straight through, but mm -hmm. strategically, this looks winning to me. Okay. Cool. Yeah, the computer never really played e5 against me when I was playing these positions. It just kind of sat as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, but basically here, the reason that your position is so good is that black has nothing better to do than sitting. You can't crush him right away. You have to be patient. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the computer is basically saying to go play bishop f8, bishop a8, and you know, mark time until we wait to die, that's a sign you should be pretty patient yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say on bishop f6, they play bishop f8 at some point, right? So, like, so we, we do this, goes. they go here. How do we keep making progress? Okay, so now I think... Um, oh, I queen think h2, it's... rook h8. That's a good start. But from, as soon as you play rook h8, there is always king d7. King d7 so yeah. You just want to make sure you're, you're careful. Um... But then when you play queen h7... Well, queen h2 is a good start. Okay. Like, what's black's next move? So he's still basically basically sitting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's horrible to try to play this position with black. If he plays d5, we still generally want to play e5? 
I mean, you yeah. could. You could also trade queens even and play like five then. Um, mm-hmm. You could play bishop e5 and then rook Oh, you can trade queens and play rook h8 and they resign. The, yeah. Then rook c8? I mean, it's probably just winning, but oh, like. Rook c8. Oh. Okay, but even like here, bishop g7, just like take everything, play e5, knight d4, like and get the world's worst bishop. I mean, even this would probably just come on. Even this could be a win. I mean, it looks horrible, right? Yeah. Okay. So. So this position is actually that good. Yeah, I think so. It just you have to be very patient about it. It's a it's a plus two the same way you get in like a king's Indian where you're white. You know, you're not crushing them right away. You just sort of slowly put your pieces through. With you your know, I thought of that, Sam, because what I was going to say about this is like for me, it's very rare to see a position with no threat that's plus two. Well, let's say no threat and equal material, right? Yeah, with no threat and equal material that's plus two is pretty rare to me, right? So, and when I thought that to myself, the one exception I thought of was like, there's these Queen's Indian positions where it's like equal and nothing's happening and I know I'm going to win for sure. That was yeah, the, this, that was the other thing that popped to my head, but I'm sure stuff such such stuff exists, but I was just could not tell why this is so good for white. Yeah, no, this was, this is one of those lines where you, basically have all the time in the world to improve your pieces black has nothing active to do and his king is always in the crossfire and you know once the dark sword bishop comes off like end games tend to be good for you too so even if by some miracle he manages to trade pieces it won't necessarily save him mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's not pretty hmm. cool that was really my p problem i think was like i got this kind of like position i kept getting this kind of position in the rouser and yeah, like so. i thought it was a good position and i just actually i didn't really know how to play it that well for some reason um yeah. the f3 the g4 quite, things the rouser is actually a tough position to handle from the white side is yeah. what i've found um i don't think it's very good for black but like practically there's some value uh but yeah, the big points I would say from this game is I think knight e2 to d4 was mistimed at this particular juncture. I think it's better to just start throwing g4. Mm -hmm. um, and that I think for black, he was playing well in this game up to knight e5. I mean, I thought h6 is not a great line, but um, once he played knight e5, I think this is very out of place for what he's trying to accomplish. And then for you, I guess knight b3 was the way to go. Great.